Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're painting a young doe deer in acrylics today. I'm using an Airbest airbrush to get the first layer on. I'm working on a 16 by 11 size canvas sheet today. And as you can see, I'm just airbrushing a really light coat of black just to fill in the starkness of the white canvas on the background. Now I'll let each layer dry, and I do, well it does dry pretty quick so you can really go back in straight away if you wish but just keep it nice and loose for now and not too near the canvas as if you're too near you tend to get more drips. So I'm just leaving some really dark areas that you can see there I'm filling in. So that's dry and I'm going in, I've just made a, a circle stencil just out of some cardstock that I did myself. I'm just using some green just to get some circle lights going in the background, some like camera reflections if you want to call it, some nice circles. Then I go back in with the dark colour again, just to skim over that, but I'm not covering it all up, I'm just covering some of it up, so you can just lightly see through. Now you can do this with a brush if you wanted to do, but I just wanted to show you the airbrush as well, because I quite like using it also in my art. So I've gone back in again with the green again, it's like a yellowy green. I've just put some brighter sections in as you can see. Now that light mist you can see, I'm just holding the airbrush quite far away from me and just giving it a nice dusting of colour at the bottom. So that's going to be like the grass that the actual deer stood on. And now I'm putting some grey, it's just like a nice mid-tone grey, just put some light reflections for the distance. Now that's all dry, so I've drawn my little deer on and I'm just going in some red ochre here with a tiny little bit of white. I'm just going to get all the values blocked in. Now because it's actually dark now, the background, I'm going in with what I'd call the mid-tones because we've already got the blocking in stage done because it's actually dark for the background as we started. So I'm going in with some red ochre, some burnt umber and some sienna. And I'm just blocking in the values here. And as it goes lighter, you'll see I'll just add tiny little bits of white and obviously the darker bits are just keeping the burnt umbers and the raw sienna. But you can just use burnt sienna as well. I do use that also. I just mixed a little bit of both raw sienna and burnt sienna together. Same here on the ears, I've just got my nice lighter pink because there's a nice pinky colour inside, so I'm just using a nice pink colour. So plenty of white mixture in that. And back to this sienna again with plenty of white in to make that nice fleshy tone. Now on the nose, I've got more purpley blue because it's more of a shadow colour there, so I thought that looked really nice as well. But don't worry about getting it all smooth blended out, it's just a blocking in stage, so just get your paint laid down and then let it dry and we can come back in with a, another layer. So here I've gone under in next, more in the yellow ochre tones and a tiny little bit of orange. I hope you enjoy this guys, I enjoy painting this far, if you do. Like I say, always gives a thumbs up if you like the video and I appreciate that very much. You can leave your comments and I'll get back to you. So same here. So same here, I'm using the yellow orcas and tiny bits of orange again, just on her legs and the off-white blue on the highlighted sections there. Like I said, still blocking in yet. I'm just getting all the values in. I think they're really nice things to paint as well, little deers and stags, they're all nice things to paint. And I'm doing it quite a smooth texture, it's not really going in with the fur. You'll see further on as the video progresses. How we build it all up. So there where I've gone green under a belly, there is a bit of a tinty greeny undertone there, it's like a bit of reflection, back like reflection from the surrounding area. 
and more into the orange sienna again and a little tail so I'm going into the burnt umbers and blues there and then back into the purples just to give it another layer it's all dried off I'm using a nice soft filbert brush for this as well so now I'm glazing so I've got some glazing medium and a tiny bit of uh, raw sienna there I'm just giving the whole of the painting of the deer a glaze over and what that does, it just brings all the painting together and gives it a more smoother transition as well. So any harsh lines that are visible, it will smooth them out. So that's why I do like to use the glazing. I'm just using my little detail brush just to get the little uh, light reflections on her nose here and in her eyes. Just a little bit of detail on her, just so she stands out. They've got nice little faces. So I just wanted to put that extra little bit of detail. And a darker shadow there under her neck, because she's got her head twisted round like she's looking at something. There's a nice dark shadow there. I'm just going around checking on my values again. Because when you do painting layers, you do cover up your dark values, so you do have to go back in and... Just bob them back in, yeah. Especially when you're painting animals, you want them to look realistic, don't you? So your values are more important, really, than the actual colour, what you paint them. As long as you've got your nice values in, everything should look okay. So this is that little fair brush up. I mentioned earlier it just gives a little bit of texture it's like a comb brush or a fur texture brush they call it so I just wanted to use this just a little bit on her face and her body same colours that we were using before but as I progress it I'll just go a bit lighter each time I like the bluey purple tones because it's a nice reflective colour as well. And she'll stand out against the nice dark background that we've put in. So I've gone back to a smaller soft fill bit here. And I'm working up in layers again, so I'm going in with thin layers. There's just a nice soft white, like, like a creamy white, just to get the nice white bits of her fur applied. So I've still got glazing medium on my brush, so it's not very thick paint, very thin. As you can see on your face, where I've covered the pinky area up, you can still see underneath. But I am letting every layer dry first and then coming back in and building up from there. So here you can see I've just gone a bit lighter again. I am using titanium white, but I've still got glazing medium on my brush. So I'm just tinting that now with a nice orangey yellow colour. And I'm just bringing it all together now where I did the blue on your face. I'm just bringing that and soft blending that into the actual blue bit on the muzzle. Because you do get some harsh edges in your work, which you want, and some you don't. So you just got to go around and just check whatever reference you're using. Obviously, that'll help and show up your harshness and your soft lines that you want to create. So this little fill that I'm using here gives great, good texture, really good texture, as well as the comb brush also. But the comb brush can leave it not looking as realistic in my opinion but you can do it in multiple layers so i do prefer to use like a nice soft filbert for that for fur texture but any brush you're comfortable with you could use an angle brush also even a flat brush so you can see me to and fro with the burnt umbers and the actual sienna orange colors and obviously the yellow orchids. 
And I'm just building them up. Like I say, every layer, let every layer dry. And I work my way around the painting. Still thin, a nice thin layer, not too heavy paint, not too thick. And same here on this dark shadow of the purple. Now I've gone, I've toned it down with a bit more purple there, so it's more of a lavender colour. So I didn't want to go over that straight white, because I actually quite like that purple essence, because I like that and the orange. They would go really nice together. It marries the actual image together. Plus we've got that beautiful, soft, subtle background as well, which makes it stand out in the picture. Another thin layer there, but just an off-white, it's not pure white, it's just a nice thin off-white. It's got a nice little tint of blue in there. But this is how I paint, I do work up in layers. And that's my preference. But this can be painted, you know, just a bit more simply if you wanted to do the actual painting yourself. Bit of detail here on her legs and round her hawk area because she's actually got a, a back end facing us, if you will, because she's on a she's twisting round. So that is the actual in the foreground bit as well. So we want to put a little bit of detail there. So I'm staying in the yellowy orangey colours. And the nice sienna. Just adding some lighter and darker areas as I see fit, like there with the yellow ochre. Then I may go back in with some darker burnt umber. I'm just creating a bit of texture there, a bit of fur texture. And I like these little soft brushes. I think they re work really well, especially when you want to do some nice soft blending out. Plus they hold quite a lot of glazing medium, which is cool for me because I use more glazing medium than natural paint sometimes. And they're soft, they won't leave uh, any scratchiness in your work. I'm just building that underbelly bit up and a bit of a fur there on the chest. So I'm going lighter now and I'm going more opaque so I'm adding less glazing medium. So the actual white paint's more opaque. And that's how you get all your highlights to show up. If you work from your mid-tones up to your highlights and you've got a nice dark underlay to start with, all your layers will just work great for you. I mean, never go too light too soon because you will lose all the values. And it'll look flat, do you know what I mean? I'm just using a yellow ochre here and some white. Just add a little spots on your body. I'm just randomly putting these on. Obviously, every day is different, I suppose. They're all unique spots. And I like the yellow walker. Then you look around the painting, you go into the nice dark browns and then the orange colours. I think it looks really nice with that touch of purple. I think it complements it all together. Plus, she stands out really nice on that cool background. I've just drawn on some little uh, bushes here. It's just a little bush with some flowers. I thought this would be cute. And it makes a nice composition also and frames it in just nice. So we've got it more set over to the left side of the canvas. So I thought I'll fill this little bit of negative space in here. So I'm just using a tiny little filbert brush here, just indicating some little bushes. Now we've got the green bit to start off with of the dark background. So I'm just going in with mid-tone greeny yellow. 
just to do some impressionistic leaves. I'm not going over detail because I want the detail actually on the animal. So I'm just indicating there's some type of foliage bush type thing growing just here on the right. Some more might stand out a little bit more, just adding some yellow ochre to that as well and a little bit of white. Because my idea was here, just to add some nice purple flowers and I think that looks really cool. I'm just going in there, we're just doing an odd little flower. I'm just using some dark scene purple and some brilliant magenta. I haven't over mixed that paint because I just wanted it to go on nice and loose. To make that nice violet colour. I could have on magenta, that's a pretty cool colour as well. But I just use a brilliant magenta in the Tilia interactive paints to really like that colour. But magenta is nice as well. I'm just adding some at the top there, just putting a few bits of detail on some of them, but not all. I'm just making an odd few of them stand out. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I really enjoyed painting this for you. I think she's a lovely little thing. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. On screen now are two videos you may like to watch. And if you're not already subscribed, click on my face and be sure to click the icon bell to get a notification. As always, thanks for watching and create something wonderful. See you all soon on my next video.